guys, it's Jane. Happy Wednesday. Top five Wednesday this week is books over 500 pages. I have gone through my shelves. I have picked out five books and here we go. Number one. Ah, Connie Willis, Doomsday Book. This copy has 578 pages. So there you go. We make the cut. Um, this is a time travel story. I feel like I'm talking about those a lot recently. Um, it's set, it's framing story is set in the future. Uh, in And our main character, Curvin, is a student at a, a, a researchy university where they're researching the past. So she's a historian and the way she works is she goes through a time machine to the past and they're only ever supposed to um, go for short periods of time but something goes wrong on Curvin's trip and she gets stuck in the Middle Ages during the plague and it is actually um, a really quite gruelling read. The, the really um, beautiful thing in this story is the movement within Curvin as she changes from seeing these people in the past as objects of her study to being subjects in their own right. And um, it's it has a kind of happy, sad, sad, happy ending. And um, it's a really, really good read. Connie Willis, The Doomsday Book. Number two. This doesn't really need any particular introduction. Neil Gaiman's American Gods. My copy has 632 pages, so again, we make the cut. Um, I actually, I am not a, a super enormous fan of Neil Gaiman, um, but this one I really love. It's the, the texture of the story. It's um, the idea behind it for the, for the few of you who maybe have not read this <laughs> is... Gods exist because of our um, belief in them, and even and so when people stop believing in particular gods, they don't disappear entirely, but their power wanes. Um, so, as it, the title says, American Gods, it's it's kind of about immigration. So different groups of people have come to America over time and they've brought with them um, splinters of, uh, of old gods from old places and, um, yeah, a lot of the pleasure of, of reading this book is actually trying to work out what is going on and then there's the, and the pros. I, as I said, I'm not a mega huge fan of Neil Gaiman. Um, but this one I really love. I've reread it a number of times and um, it's beautiful. Number three, Colleen McCulloch, an Australian author. For those of you who don't know, Colleen McCulloch, The First Man in Rome. This is a straight out historical um, novel. Let me see one more time. 1032. We're really getting up there now. Um, this is the first in a series of of books about uh, Rome and essentially about the Caesars. Um, this one is set before the first Caesar, although he appears, uh, Julius appears as a child late in the book. So this is kind of setting the scene of um, what what was going on before the Caesars took charge. It's in and of itself, it's a really gripping read. These um, the series, I, in my personal opinion, the series runs out of puff before it runs out of books. But the first four or five are really quite gripping. So there's that one. Number four, Flicker by Theodore Rozak. Um, oh, this is actually the second copy of this that I owned I thought I'd lost the first one and I so I <laughs> went online and, and bought another copy and then I found the first copy but anyway this copy has 607 pages in it um 
I'm not sure whether this is an especially well-known book or not. I, I read this, first read this, um, oh, 20 plus years ago. My, my first copy I actually got as a remainder stock from a newsagent's when I was, you know, a student and had no money. But it's a really, really interesting read. Uh, it's exactly my kind of book. It's a uh, kind of secret history um, uh, about about the beginning of film. It's you know it's not actually about the beginning of film. It's a conspiracy theory, secret th history thing about the beginning of film. Those people who've read William Gibson's Blue Ant uh, trilogy with the um, the footage in that this this book is a a vaguely similar storyline to just the the footage storyline in those books, and um, I, it, it's a cracker of a read. And I, as I said, I've I've now owned two copies of this book. So <laughs> fantastic! The guy that wrote this also wrote The Devil and Daniel Silverman, which I've not read, but I I've heard really interesting things about. So there's that flicker. And last but not least, I don't really order these lists, but in this case, let's make an exception. My number one, probably my favourite book at the moment in the last sort of five years is Neil Stevenson's Ream D. And um, I don't think I've actually talked about this on the channel yet. So, hey, here we go. That's that. If that's that's over 500 pages, surely. Let's have a look. Oh, 1,044. Okay, so um, this is a, a, an action thriller. Um, its two main characters are an, an uncle and his niece, uh, and they each have their own storyline, which uh, in the first sort of section of the book, um, are, are rel seem relatively separate and then they end up um, being threaded together. Uh, Richard Forthrast, the uncle, is a multi-millionaire um, who, amongst other things, founded a company which runs an, an, an enormously successful online game called Terrain, um, which is kind of World of Warcrafty esque, and uh, Zula, the niece, works for him in a certain capacity, uh, and she is dating this guy who ends up getting himself into a major league trouble, and they are kidnapped by Russian mafia and end up in China, and then they end up being kidnapped, re-kidnapped by um, uh, Abdullah Jones, who it turns out is kind of a Osama Bin Laden type character who's a black Welshman, of course. Uh, and of course, Richard, you know, at some point realises that Zula is missing because there's no ransom demand sent and immediately because um, it's not actually about that initially. Um but, yeah, and it ends up with a really exciting kind of final third. It's a thriller and it's fun. And um, now I haven't made a short video at all. I've made a long one. So I'm going to stop now. And uh, I hope you're all well and I'll talk to you later. Bye.